first of all, nobody in the world would allow us to do what we do. I mean, you couldn't see a show like this on any other network. Because people go, tech, oh, nobody wants to see that, or I don't understand what they're talking about. We found, we've been very lucky to find a niche here. And, um, and I think what we do is unique. I mean, look at, you look at the show, it doesn't, it's not high production value. <clears throat> I think people tune by and go, what is that? It looks, you know, it looks like uh, some cable access show or something. We, we, we're, we're intentionally funky, intentionally kind of down market. We want to feel accessible at home. We, we, we want people to feel like um, we're friends coming into their house to talk about stuff that they're interested in and, and care about and to help them understand it. Can you believe this? We're going to do a live television show an hour every day and rely on these things to work. This is going to be the most fun show to watch because it's going to be great to watch us as we scramble when these things don't work. I, if you had to pick one thing that we're most like, it's home shopping. Ironically, we're not selling anything. In fact, more often than not, we're saying don't buy stuff. I mean, I, uh, editorially, we really want to say, you know, the computer industry is selling you a lot of hype. We're going to cut through that hype and tell you what really is so. So in that sense, we're not the same. Tech TV Labs, Andrew Hahn. Now, don't put your finger in there. He's got some amazing, wacky USB devices, including that portable shaver. You're right. Ah. <laughs> we'll show you some things that you never thought you could do with your USB port. I think that Call for Help is unique to all the other shows on TV because nobody else is doing what we're doing, live computer help and information. Most people have a computer these days and everybody's got problems with them and to get help is extremely difficult. So I think that our show is unique because people watch us on TV answering questions that they might have, but they also really truly have the ability to call in and get their questions answered. So how can we help you, Jack? Okay, I got a question. I got a DVD that's got a live concert performance on it. Uh -huh. Okay. And what I'd like to know is if I can extract those songs to put on the iPod. Uh, before I get into any of this, Jack, you realize it's borderline kind of gray, lark, uh, gray line uh, illegal. Uh, yeah. Technically. Be because technically you are kind of breaking uh, the encryption scheme that they have, so you can't do this, uh, and you could possibly find yourself, or I could possibly find myself in some sort of trouble uh, down the line. Hi, this is a message for Brian. Brian, this is Fawn. I'm calling from Tech TV's Call for Help. I'm calling to see whether or not you're available tomorrow since we didn't get a chance to take your question on Monday. I do everything from looking through emails to see what would, be, what would make a good caller, um, I research the questions and I send the questions over to Leo or whoever it is that's hosting for the day and then once they clear it then I give these people a call. Um, call wise I think it's pretty easy you know you just have to make sure those people are there when you call them and they're not going to flake on you but of course you always need to have backups for callers in case someone does flake on you or their net cam doesn't work you need an alternative. I have a main issue. I have a main issue. I know you do too. So we're trying to figure out the calls on air. That part? Oh, that one's the last one. So I want the business needs to be taken care of, taken care of in the breaks. It's all in the rundown. It's been there, you know, since this morning. No surprises. I get my content just from scouring the internet every single day and looking for hot trends, what people are talking about, just by sitting on the computer all day long. But I love doing it. We also get a lot of uh, a lot of our information, believe it or not, from our viewers. You know, they often uh, give us a uh, heads up on new technologies or perhaps uh, circumstances or situations that we might not consider because we're not a we're not an average home user. So they might bring up certain uh, software or perhaps operating system conflicts that we have yet to encounter because we don't deal on a kind of um, a more home level. Between writing articles and editing articles, I stack the, the page. And then I work with the TV people and writing quizzes for the show. And I get on their ass to do their articles if they're past deadline. And there used to be a time where we'd write them, but you know, if they're lazy, to hell with them. We just won't put it up anymore because there's just not, we're, we're so understaffed um, that if they don't do their job, I'm not doing it for them. Well, with this, what I'll probably do is just make it, make it one. Uh, one, one with bigger, one, one yeah. bar bigger. Um, Maybe collapse some of the things into... Yeah, and I've also taken out stuff. I mean, one of the things that you have to understand with, with a website is pay attention to where people are going. If you have a host, right. pay attention to where people are going. Right. There are ideas that I thought were great on this and site. nobody looked at it? Nobody went. Right. And if, since the website's not for me, then I have to pay attention to, okay, nobody's going here. <laughs> nobody I, wants it. Get so rid take of it, it off.
Come well, that comes variety. down to knowing who your audience is, too, Absolutely. doesn't it? And, and yes. so did you spend a lot of time thinking about who's going to want to see this site and what kinds of things are they going to want to see? We are the only profitable part of the network. We get close to 1.8 million hits a day throughout the site, which is probably more than people will watch any show on the network ever um, in one day. So the importance of the web really, it really paid off and we're actually starting to notice that more people are actually watching. So I think it's because of the web. Without, without us, there's really no TV show. You know, it's kind of funny because I've been here since the beginning. I mean, literally, I, was, I started my internship a week before the network launched. And I remember when Call for Help first started, and I look back on the past six years, and it's, it's actually kind of mind-boggling how much the show has progressed, even with the same people, uh, you know, in front of the camera. And it's, it's a credit to not only just the, the people that work on the show, but the people that man the cameras that, you know, that direct the show. Four people expected us, you know, to fail within two years. We've, you know, we've blown that totally out of the water, and you know, we still have a huge following, not just in the U.S., but also around the world. We get lots of email from, uh, you know, Southeast Asia, the Middle East, uh, and the Caribbean, and it's great because, you know, you're, you're realizing that the stuff you do doesn't just affect the people next to you, it affects people across the world, and it's nice to know that something you do is uh, helping people. I don't think we have to, I don't want to change the show too much. I want to give them a reason to say, oh yeah, I can see it's still reaching that core audience. We should be careful about completely changing things if uh, what they're looking for isn't what we think they're looking for. Right, right. we don't know. I don't want to completely exactly. go off the Exactly. It should not, it should feel like Call for Help has always felt. Yeah. But it's okay if you're going to do a build a PC to say build a gaming PC. Right. I think we, that, should, we should have done that years ago. We should have done it anyway. It's funny because Call for Help, it seems like they've wanted to kill that show and we continue to live. We're like the Keith Richards of Tech TV. Uh, they've put us in the worst possible time slot. They've changed our host. Uh, it doesn't matter. People keep watching. That's great. Woohoo! Hey, who knows? Who knows? But we have a good idea. What is this all? It says our last show was yesterday. What? That's our website. Don't believe the website. We yeah, handle the website. The website. The you know what I'm saying? But it's a, not a, a live server, the but it's, it, yeah, so they can see what it will look like. If they flush the wrong server, then that's what happens. Leo seems to be confident that if G4 doesn't take us, that he's going to take this show to another network, which is cool. I think that people are just going to have to use Google, and if this show goes away, they're, they're going to be really upset, but just like any show, I mean, they'll live. It's not like anyone's going to die. It's TV. This is totally what happens. All I need is your John Hancock of my... my... Will do. That's no problem. You, you normally respond to your Leoville at Leo, or Leo at Leoville. That's it. I'll probably be emailing you, too, just in case something happens next week. Well, I'll be around, you know. Hey, Roger. Fancy meeting you at the unemployment office. <laughs> Good, I even got the very end of this. See, who says technology has to be hard? Oh, it's awesome. That wasn't so hard. And it all thanks to thanks Windows to XP. Yeah, exactly. Getting to have a voice and being on for an hour, it's amazing. It's been great. It doesn't get much better than this for someone in my position. It's pretty cool. I'm very thankful. If it doesn't continue, I feel terrible. I feel like we've let them down, you know. I would also say that I think we've shown that there's a need and a market for something like this and that one way or the other, this show will continue somewhere, somehow, in some form. I'm not going to stop doing it. So um, I guess what I would say is this is just a brief interruption. Stay tuned. The show's not over yet. We have loved doing it. We are not saying goodbye just until we meet again. I think we'll be on the air somewhere someday. I'm Leo Laporte. Remember, if you've got a problem with your personal confuser, don't whine, don't moan, don't moan!